What's going on guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how I go about finding Facebook ad interests to target and my thinking behind choosing an actual interest to make sure that whenever I'm running ads on Facebook, that I'm actually putting my ad in front of the right people. People who are actually interested and passionate about my product and an audience that actually contains people who want to buy it. So if you've been running ads up to this point and you haven't seen the results that you hoped for, you haven't really got people that are clicking on your ad, never mind buying it and your CPMs, are quite expensive or perhaps you've got poor quality rankings and all in all you're just not seeing the results you hoped for then it could come down to the fact that you're putting your ad in front of the wrong people and in this video i'm going to show you how to change that and how to now put it in front of the right people so the first thing i want to show you is that what it actually means to target an interest on facebook so most people make the assumption that if you're targeting an interest like crossfit then you are targeting people who are really interested in CrossFit and they go to the gym and all their workouts are based in and around CrossFit. However, I wanna to illustrate to you that that isn't always the case. This is also something you can do with your own Facebook profile. What you need to go, if we take a look at my screen here, is go to facebook.com forward slash ad preferences forward slash ad underscore topics. And essentially what Facebook is now gonna show you is all of the different topics that you are included in. So as it says at the top here, these are ad topics advertisers can use um, to reach you. So for example, if we take a random one like um, conversion marketing, if somebody was to run an ad and use the interest conversion marketing, I would be included in that audience, included in those people, and it could pop up on my newsfeed. So the reason why this is really important is because you'll see in your own list as you scroll through all of the different ad topics, you'll see some of them and think, I'm not interested in that at all. Why am I included it as part of an interest? So what this in turn translates into is that when you're targeting a certain interest, you're not necessarily targeting who you think you might be. You might just be targeting completely random people that have no interest in your product at all. So for example, let's just scroll through some of these and we have CrossFit as the example I used in the introduction. I have pretty much zero interest in CrossFit. If somebody was to target me with a CrossFit workout, I wouldn't take any note of it at all and I'd probably just scroll straight past it. Let's go right down into it. As you can see, there's hundreds and hundreds of different interests. Axel Witzel, I have absolutely no idea what that is. David Spade, I have no idea who he is or what that is. So when you're targeting interests on Facebook, you're not necessarily targeting people who are interested in your product. So this is where ad strategies like flex targeting come in, where you can help eliminate and kind of increase the quality of your audience, which I'll be touching on in a minute or two. The next thing I want to show you is this illustration here. So when you're thinking about interests to target, you have to try and target those people who are most passionate and spending money in the niche or on the products that you're actually selling. So I've got two different examples here. I've got a golf example because I like golf and I've got kind of like a dog example or pet example because there's a lot of people starting businesses going into the pet niches. So the way this illustration works here is it kind of shows how by targeting a golfing related interest, you're not necessarily targeting people who play golf and therefore they're not gonna be interested in a golf product. So we have the larger, darker circle on the outside which is um, reflected of the Tiger Woods audience, a massive audience, a really famous person, there's a lot of people that have never swung a golf club in their life, but will know who Tiger Woods is. So by targeting him as an interest, you might think you're doing the right thing, but in reality, you're targeting people who never picked up a golf club, and so they're not gonna be interested in your ad for a golf product, and they're definitely not gonna click it, never mind actually buy it. Next we have in the slightly smaller circle is Rory McIlroy. So still a pretty popular golfer. A lot of people, especially in England, will know who he is. However, he doesn't make global world headlines. He doesn't get on the news outside of golf. Therefore, by targeting him, you're going to be including those more kind of casual golfers. But because he is still one of the big names, it's still quite a kind of broad interest, if you like, within the golfing niche. If we go one smaller and go for Colin Morikawa, if you've never played golf and have no interest in golf, then you probably don't know who Colin Morikawa is. And as it says here, this is going to be targeting, if we use his as an example, we're going to be targeting the true golfing enthusiasts. These are going to be the people who are playing golf week in, week out, watching it and have a need, a requirement, an interest interest in golfing products and these are going to be the people who are interested therefore in your ad creative and they're going to be clicking on it and buying it as well so this trick if you like i call the only enthusiasts so you want to make sure you're targeting the people who are most passionate about the products that you're selling so if it's in the kitchen niche you want to be targeting those people who 
are really keen and enthusiastic about cooking or baking, whatever niche it may be. Then we have the only owner's trick. So this is applicable to pets mainly, of course. Around the outer ring, we have I love dogs as an interest. These are all real interests that you can target. You don't have to love dogs to own a dog. There's gonna be millions of people out there who love dogs but don't have one. And therefore, they're not gonna buy your dog lead or your dog collar or your harness or your toy or your bed, whatever it may be. So by targeting that as an interest, you're gonna be including all of those people who have no requirement for that product and therefore you're going to burn through and spend a lot of money putting your ad in front of people who just aren't interested. This can and will have a real negative effect on the results of your Facebook ads because Facebook will start to rank it, it will start to take note of how people are responding to it. This is reflected in your quality rankings and if people aren't responding to it and they're not interested in it, Facebook is going to see your ad as low quality, it's not going to show it to as many people, your CPM is going to start to bump up and ultimately the ad is going to fail. So it's really important that you have a good product, a good creative and a good audience to put it in front of. We can go one smaller, one more specific, one more higher quality and target dog walking. These are gonna be the casual owners. So everybody who has a dog, the majority of people who have dogs will take them out for a walk at some point. So you're still increasing the quality, but you're still only targeting those casual owners. If you wanna target those people who are enthusiasts and live their lives for their dogs, then you wanna be targeting those interests which encapture those people, people who are interested in dog behavior. That's one that you can target people People who are interested in dog training, people who live their life for their dogs and their dogs are a massive part of their lives. They spend a lot of time, they spend a lot of money and they commit a lot of both of those things into their dog and training it and making sure it behaves in the proper way. One thing you can do then, one thing you can do then to help increase the quality of your audience, it's not always gonna do it because Facebook more and more is trying to get people to target more broadly. However, with Facebook, what they suggest isn't always the thing that works. It's definitely a case when it comes to Facebook of testing lots and lots of different things, seeing what works, seeing what sticks, and then doubling down on what that is. That's why I always refer to when you're running Facebook ads, you have a testing phase and you have a scaling phase. One thing that I recommend everybody test in their testing phase is flex targeting. This used to be really, really popular. It kind of become less popular as Facebook started pushing people towards more broader audiences. However, it can still work. It has still worked and it is still working for some of the things that I'm doing. So I definitely recommend that you at least test it and see what happens for you. So the way it works is when you come into your detail targeting section in your ad set and we put in a interest, an interest like Doug Walker in. So all in all, we think that's a pretty high quality interest. It's going to target people, those casual dog owners, people who own dogs, um, and therefore we should get a pretty good hit rate um, on the response of our ads. I'm just going to remove this detail tag in expansion. So we get a true reflection to super kind of hype up the quality of this audience because as we've seen, if we go back to my ad preferences on Facebook, just to target one interest alone isn't always enough to make sure we're targeting the right people because as we can see, there's hundreds and hundreds of different interests here, some that I'm linked to that I just have no interest in at all, like fabric and crafting supplies, hair removal, God knows how that one's got on there, Chris Stapleton, um, veganism, I'm not interested, I'm not a vegan. So as you can see, just to target one interest alone isn't always enough. So what we can do is try and eliminate that and really bump up the quality of the audience by hitting narrow audience and then put something else in like dog training. Dog training pets. And then we could even go one further and go for dog behavior. So now we're included in our audience dog walking as well as dog training, as well as dog behavior. So what we're doing is the only people that will show up in this criteria or that we're telling Facebook to target are people that have all three of these ad categories in this list. And the chances of somebody having all three versus all one, the person who has all three is probably all three, I should say, um, it's probably gonna be much more passionate about dogs and has a higher quality chance of being a dog owner. Therefore, they're gonna be more interested in that ad. Therefore, they're more likely to click it and therefore they're more likely to buy our product. I hope that makes sense.
So next time you're building out some Facebook campaigns and some ad sets, definitely give this strategy a go, a test. Try and get into the mindset as well of thinking rather than just random related interests, try and consider those which will um, include those people who are most passionate or the people who are actively doing your sport or people actively spending money within your niche. You'll definitely be increasing the quality of your audience, which will in turn increase the results of your Facebook ads. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.